Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is about Sony Set280 camcorder and the audio setup. We have several options with the Set280 to get up to four channels audio into the camcorder. What we check today is the XLR A3M together with the ECM MX1 microphone, the ECM MS2 stereo mic, and Sony famous UWP D series together with the Hotshoe the Smat P5 adapter. But before we plug on one of the audio devices, let's check the menu structure in the camcorder and let's see which audio options you can choose. As you know, the Z280 has the option for four channels of audio. So four independent audio streams can be recorded in the camcorder. And you have several options to get these audio channels in. Is the MI shoe, the XLR or the XLR adapter? And if you like to choose which channel goes on or which input goes on which channel then you have to use the external knob section but also the internal part in the software menu. Let's switch to the external knob section and see what you can choose here. Okay here we have behind the flap the audio section of the camcorder on the hardware side. You have four level knobs or you can change the audio input level for channel one, two, three, and four independently. The channel three and four, everything what you can select on this channel is only available over the software menu, which we have a look in a second. On channel one and two, you can choose several options. Is the input, which is line, MIG, or MIG 48 volt phantom power. These switches are corresponding with the XLR here on the left side of the camcorder. And then you have a selection switch for internal mic, which is the mic here on the front, is the external mic, which are the XLRs here, and the MI shoe, which is one of the MI shoes here on top in the front or in the back side of the camcorder. So you have to choose by these hardware switches which type of input you like to use. If you use the radio mic, then of course it's the SMAT adapter with the MI shoe. If you use the XLRs, then you can switch between line and MIG and MIG with phantom power. And we will have a look which type of hardware we can connect to which type of socket in the camcorder. Okay, this was the outside knob section for the audio part. Let's have a look into the viewfinder and let's see what you can choose on the software side of the set 280. Here you see the viewfinder of the IGMI output. Let's go to the menu and let's go to point number four, which is the audio point. And let's go to the input section. The first thing you can choose for channel number two is input one or input two. So input one is always on channel number one and can be not selected. Uh, but channel number two can be selected by input one or two. Channel number three can be input one, internal mic or MI shoe and channel number four can be input one, input two, and the MI shoe. And of course, you can switch the channel off if you don't need it. The reference level, this is the sensitivity of your input. As lower this level is, as higher is the input sensitivity of your input. So minus 80 is very, very sensitive. That is not needed normally for shotguns or external mics. Minus 60 is a good point. If you are very close to a very high noise, maybe minus 50 is good enough, but minus 60, is a good it's a good level same for input 2 and then you have the internal mic level this is the input sensitivity of the mic in front of the camcorder line input if you use on the xlr a line signal you can choose between plus four zero minus three and ebul if you're in in the european union and you work for a european broadcaster maybe ebul is fine but normally plus four is good enough reference level for overall is um, the input level, so um, you can choose even here EBUL if you like, but also here um, I would choose the minus 20, which is good. The wind filter, hmm, wind filter is a nice function, but you have to be careful because the wind filter can cut off some high frequencies. And if it's working very hard, then it can cut off some of your audio signals complete. So check it before you record it. Check the wind filter, how it works, if it works nice for you, then it's okay, but be careful with this. I would not recommend to use the filter without any test. Yeah, they could choose this for all four channels. There is a limiter. Um, I would not use it if it's not really necessary um, because the 
AGC for channel one and channel two, um, the automatic gain control is nothing else than another limiter, I would say. So yeah, you can choose this is stereo or mono. Um, so for channel one and two and for channel three and four, and then you can change the point when the AGC starts working. You cannot switch it off. So that's why I would not use the limiter on top of the AGC um, because the AGC cannot be switched off. So the minus six or minus nine or minus 12 dB is the input level when the AGC starts to work. Minus six is good if you're in a normal level situation. If you expected some higher noise around you or some uh, higher level signal around you, maybe you're on the street, you make an interview and maybe some truck passing you, then the minus 12 or even minus 15 dB is nice. If you use the radio mic, and I show you later why um, I tell you this now, then go to the minus six because then the AGC starts working very late in your, um, on your input level. Let's go back to the audio output. Here you can choose the channels you like to monitor or if your headphones are stereo or mono and then is the alarm level if you have some alarm set up and if you like to see channel one or two or three or four um, on the HDM output. And this is all, it's a very simple menu. Most important is to find um, the level for the AGC for you. So again, AGC is from my point of view nothing else than another limiter. So you don't leave the limiter function on top of the AGC. Um, and be careful. If you use a radio mic like the UFPD series with the now to gain function and explain in a minute what it is, then you don't need your AGC uh, acting very heavily because the transmitter is doing this for you. But in the end, standard setups from factory presets are okay to use from my point of view. Okay, let's connect some hardware to the camcorder. First, we check the A3M XLR adapter, uh, which will be connected over the MI shoe. It's very simple. Um, use the MI shoe, slide it in, tighten the nut, and you're ready to go. So what you have now is channel one and two over the XLR and channel three and four over the MI shoe, which gives you another two XLR inputs on the A3M adapter. In the end, you can use four mics or two stereo mics or whatever you like. And on top, the A3M has a third input, which is a mini jack, which is a stereo input uh, where you can use several external mic for recording ambient. The XLR A3M is coming with two more products in the box. One is the ECM XM1, a short shotgun mic, a mono one with a fixed cable and a windshield. Um, it has a nice interference tube. I think it's working well. If you like to have some real world test, write it down in the comment field and I will try to get it and test it outside in the field. And the other product comes with the A3M is in MI shoe extension cable. This is really a nice thing if you like to use a radio mic on another position than on top of the camcorder. The MI shoe extension cable is very easy to use. You use one of the MI shoes, the back one or the front one, just slide it in, tighten the nut, and now you have an an eye shoe which can be placed somewhere on the camcorder wherever you want it. And you can use this for light, for radio mics or any accessory which is available for the MI shoe. This adapter comes together with the XLR A3M extension kit. The next mic I'd like to show you is the ECM MS2, a short stereo mic which has two cables on for stereo and it is a fixed cable about, I would say 45 centimeters. It is an MS stereophony microphone. If you like to use what is MS stereophony, then write down the comment field and I will do an external video. The same is if you like to have some sound samples in a real world, then write it down in the comment and I will try with this mic outside my flat here and then we will check how good this mic really is. Um, it's very simple. You mount it on the camcorder on the microphone um, adapter, plug the two XLRs in and you are ready to go. If you use the mic in mono mode, 
then take care that you use the XLR with the red ring here. And then you can use this mic also in mono mode. This works easy. And it gives you a free channel for other audio source. The last option I'd like to show you today is the Euler Producers radio mic, which can be mounted over the MI2 and gives you a channel or two channels of audio into your set 280 camera. There are several videos on the web where people like me or my colleagues in other countries explain deeply how the UWD series works. If you're interested about this, then have a look in the comment field. I will put some links in. If you are not happy with what you see there, then write it down in the comment field and I will make an extra video about the um, setup options and the options inside the UWD series. But now let's try to mount it on the MI shoe of the set 280 camcorder. The Z280 has two MI shoes, one on the back and one in the front. So you can use one of them um, for getting two audio channels over the SMAT adapter into the camcorder. You need a SMAT adapter and you need a receiver from the UWD series. Can be the B40, um, can be the P40 one channel or the PO3D two channel adapter. They have two different adapter. It can be the URX B40 one channel receiver or the URX PO3D two channel receiver. Both of them have their own SMAT adapter. I have the P40 here, the portable version four. Um, yeah, take the, take the rubber off the backside away, slide the MI shoe in, fix it with the nut. and you're ready to go. On the back side, you have a switch where you can change between analog input and digital input. On the set 280, you can use the digital one. Yeah, and then, and then you slide it in and you're ready to go. The screen is not blocked by the P40. Okay, the P40 is mounted on the MI shoe on top of the set 280 camcorder. Now we have to fix our routing that the channel over the MI shoe goes to the right channel into the camcorder. Then we have to set up the transmission and find a free frequency and then we can level the input mic to the right sensitivity. Let's start with setting up the routing. I switched input number one to MI shoe. That is very important. So I will use channel one for the radio mic. So input number one is switched to MI shoe. I switched the input number two to external and I have not connected the XLRs of the ECM MS2. This is just to see on the bar graph only one channel to be sure that this is my radio mic. If we look into the menu, remember that we have on channel one the MI shoe goes directly to channel number one and I will use also the MS2 stereo mic which is attached to the camcorder and I will use this on input number one and input number two. So the two XLR sockets where the ECM MS2 is connected. So I have three audio channels now. Channel number one is the MI shoe, the radio mic. Channel number two is not in use. Channel number three is the first channel of the stereo mic and channel number four is the second channel of the stereo mic which are attached to the XLR on the left side of the camcorder. The rest I leave as it is. To show you a little bit better the setup of the receiver, I have attached the receiver of the extension cable from the uh, A3M kit to the camcorder. But you see, um, the receiver is working if I take the battery pack away. It is still working because it's powered over the MI shoe. So you don't have to take care about any battery on the receiver side. You only have to control one battery and this is the battery of the camcorder, which I think is a very, very big advantage. To start a scan, you first choose the frequency range you like to use. The receiver has up to 72 MHz bandwidth inside, so find the frequency range you like to use or which is legal in your region, and then press the NFC sync button. It starts the scan. And after some seconds, it has found a free frequency, stop the scan, and the display starts blinking and tells you to sync. The transmitter is switched off. And you have here the NFC logo, so put NFC logo to NFC logo. 
it vibrates three times, say complete in both displays, and now your transmission is established. Everything works fine. Next point is set up the audio input level to the right point, and we come back here to this point we saw in the menu, limiter and AGC, and I told you this is not necessary if you use a UWD series. Let me show you why this is. Okay, here we have the transmitter. Let's go into the menu, and you see there is some audio level here in the bar graph visible. Um, and we go to the next point, which is band and frequency and so on, is gain mode. So if gain mode is a normal, then your attenuation can be used. Press the set button for two seconds and change your attenuation. Zero dB is the most sensitivity on the input. And if you put more attenuation into the signal flow up to 27 dB, then it is less sensitivity. So 27 is the lowest sensitivity, zero is the highest sensitivity, and you can change this in 3 dB steps. If you go to gain mode and press the set button, then you can change this to auto gain. In auto gain, the attenuator is not longer usable because the transmitter is checking the audio level by themselves. And what has changed is that we have now a limiter in the signal flow. So if there is some high audio SPL level on your mic, you normally overdrive the input section on your transmitter and you have some audio distortion. And here the auto gain avoids you from this. So the limiter is take care that your audio signal is not overloaded even if somebody cries into the mic. This is the perfect function for your daily use. I would recommend to use auto gain whenever you can. The third function on the input, the boost mode. In boost mode, your reference level goes up to 15 dB more sensitivity. So you get more input signal with the same SPL level on the mic. The auto boost gives you a higher sensitivity. So this is not really usable for the, for the body pack, but this is absolutely perfect if you have the handheld. If you have an interview situation, we have 20 mics on the table and the mics are half a meter or even more away from the mouse of the speaker, then you have to use your handheld as a shotgun. And in this case, the boost function helps you to get still enough level, a good signal from your audio sources, even if the mic is a meter away. So that's the three stages we have. Normal is as every other microphone input works. You can overdrive your level and you can set up your reference level in a way you like in 3 dB steps. Auto boost, 15 dB more sensitivity if it's necessary because your mic is far away from the speaker. And auto gain for a daily use because the limiter avoids you from any distortion in your audio signal. In summary, Connect to the MI shoe, check your routing, make a scan, sync it to the transmitter, set up your gain, and you're ready to go. The last thing I'd like to mention is the UXP03D two channel receiver. This can receive signals from two transmitters and give two channel independent audio from these transmitters into the camcorder. And of course, with two UXP03D receivers, you can get four channels of radio mic into your set to 80 camcorder. That's all for now about the audio setup of the set to 80. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any comment, write down in the comment field. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like the video, thumbs down. Let me know what you like to see next time. Subscribe to the channel and stay safe. Thanks for watching.